Должна сказать, что мы играем. Dear friends, I hope many of you are watching. We decided to start with playing rather than introduction. In our times, I think this is the perfect choice of a program because Beethoven serves as an example of victory of spirit over matter. And he stands as a father figure to us musicians. Today we're also celebrating the Father's Day in the US. What we just played for you with Lydia Frumkin, my wonderful friend and fantastic pianist, is actually not written for my instrument. It's written for a piano and a violin. This is the last sonata by Ludwig van Beethoven for violin and a piano. It's not as late, late work. It's not as late. Uh, he did not compose it as late in his life as he did the uh, cello sonatas, last two cello sonatas. But still, this is the late middle period. The sonata, if some of you who are familiar with the typical Beethoven's works, is not really usual. Um, it's almost Brahmsian. There's an um, even Asian mode in the beginning. Pentatonic. It's very vocalistic. It phrases beautiful landscape, you may say. Music is a language, and Beethoven chose to speak his language with instruments rather than with the voices and he truly excelled in communicating, communicating with the masses. He was the first one, and perhaps the only one, uh, to be so influential, to be so, so many minds were occupied with his music, as still are. Some considered him the greatest composers, composer of all. I would value Bach over, but I'd say that if Bach relinquishes his works to God when he says soli dio gloria. That way um, expresses his humbleness. Then Beethoven is exactly the opposite. He's actually building his Moses. He's more like more exactly. He's the establisher of the new. He's he's building. He said in Gesellstadt, he said, I will take my fate by the throat. And that's pretty much you know, the, uh, the, the statement of uh, his career. 
We will continue with the second movement of the 10th Sonata for a violin and a piano. It's called Adagio Espressivo. It will be followed by Scherzo, Allegro, and by Finale, which is a, under folk influence. Es scherzo. <laughs>
Here it is, sonata number 10 for violin and the piano. Beethoven uh, couldn't really uh, boast about his uh, wonderful relationship with his father. He, his father was not really a father figure. He was exploiting young Beethoven, and uh, some even believe that Beethoven's uh, later nightmare deafness was uh, related to those uh, strikes that he received from his father uh, in his childhood. His father dreamed of Beethoven to be a second Mozart, so he uh, reduced his age by two years and tried to pass him as a wonderful wunderkind, uh, the child prodigy, which Beethoven obviously was, and he was a, more than that, he was a genius. Could it be because of that that, um, oh, I forgot to mention that Beethoven's grandfather was actually a um, singer and then choir director and quite a prominent figure in Bonn. Uh, he became a Kappelmeister. Um, so he was uh, quite a well-known musician and uh, Beethoven's father was also a singer um, and at the court. Um, so it's interesting how Beethoven is often criticized for not being a melodist. <laughs> Why is that? Why is no, well, there are some songs, there are some romances, right? But there are no, there's only one opera, <coughs> which is uh, questionably, some believe it's a great work, some believe that it's not a great work at all but most of Beethoven's music is not written for voice. It's written for instruments. And his 
language changed over the years. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to play for you the first movement of um, his sonata for piano and cello. You see, he names uh, 10 sonatas for violin and piano. He names them as violin and piano, but for piano and cello. So obviously, um, he didn't think of his friend Bernard Romberg as a somebody who he would put in front of the pianist. But um, we will um, play for you the um, fifth sonata. It's almost we can discuss later. By the way, this is a live uh, event, so if you have any comments, any questions, anything you would like to ask Lydia or me, you're welcome to do so. We'll be excited to, to, to hear your feedback. But um, to me, this first movement of the last uh, sonata uh, for piano and cello, which is a later work than the one which has played for you, it's, um, it's almost like looking at a portrait, well, you can say a portrait of Rembrandt, maybe, because of the, uh, the features are not attractive. The eyes are really magnetic. You can see that the, 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 the portrait of a person is not a handsome person. It's not a beautiful face, but it's a absolutely irresistible face in terms of its magnetism. There's, it's a really strange, bizarre music, but it's awesome in its own way. I hope you enjoy it.
If um, anyone in the audience has any questions or comments about the heard music, we would love to take a five minute break and just uh, because we're going to switch not only to another century and another place, but in a totally <laughs> in other realms. To switch without walking around. Exactly. <laughs> The uh, next composer uh, we're featuring on our program is Sergei Vasilievich Rachmaninov, a great composer and great pianist. I'm wondering if he would have guessed how popular he is. How his music is uh, <coughs> uh, very close to the in popularity to Tchaikovsky's. They're, they're both performed as often as we can imagine. He had been uh, under depression in his, during his whole life, was still composing the music of immense power and passion, and he wa was arguably the best pianist who has ever lived. Would like some water or something? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
что-то хочешь сказать о Рахманинове? Нет. from uh, Rachmaninoff's um, uh, cello and piano sonata, Opus 19, Andante.
we will follow with the famous vocalese by Rachmaninoff.
So if you think that uh, Rachmaninoff is a Russian composer, think again. He, he was related to Moldovan princes, and even his last name suggests some uh, uh, Muslim uh, connections. So his music and his special harmonies, we are, the Russians are listening to, to Rachmaninoff's music from the very childhood, so we feel that this is entirely Russian, but it's not. It's not, it's, uh, it's a very Eastern music. It's the music of the Steppen. It's the music of the gypsies, of Moldovans. Um, the rhythms, the later, and of course, he incorporated, you can feel that um, he, he um, a lot of it sounds like jazz, so the, the harmonies. And there is skipping rhythms, the tumbling of triplets and duplets, it's very, um, it's not really Russian. But then what is? So that is a separate conversation, but what is, what is Russian? Um, we will uh, continue with a very um, folk <laughs> music, talking about gypsies. Uh, this is a Hora Staccata by Diniku. Um, I believe he's a Romanian composer. Is he? Diniku. Who, yeah, who, where, do you know where he came from? Romanian. Romanian? Hora Staccata. Я проимпровизирую немножко, чтобы как-то... 
we still have some time, right? So I will, um, I will improvise something for you before we move on to the next uh, song. We will now play Elfin Tanz by David Popper. Thank you. 
who want to ask us something, because I'm suspecting. Uh, can you translate? It's really weird, you know, I must tell the audience members, this is really a bizarre, bizarre uh, state, right? But this is as uh, close as we can come to, that's like the best, next best thing that we both can have you on your end and us on our end. So we hope that you enjoy the program. Um, we enjoyed uh, playing <laughs> for you. <laughs> we know that you're there, even though we don't see you, don't hear you, but um, hopefully we will be doing this more and more, it looks like, because of the situation is so uncertain I guess the musicians have to try to get used to this setting. And um, please don't forget that musicians are angels. Musicians are keeping this world sane. So if you think that uh, technical progress or in armament, in our armament is important for the country, think that the arts and the music are more important. So please do not forsake the musicians because they are the true um, supporters, supporters of this world. Music is the language that is spoken throughout the countries, throughout the religions, throughout the differences, throughout the races. Music is the language that has to keep sounding. So, we we're here and we will be here because we love music and hope you do too okay thank you for listening <laughs>